I can't procrastinate about it anymore. That time has come for me to insulate under the floors. April 21st, kickoff 3.15. By the way, look at this. Here's the old uh, cast iron vent pipe for the old fire. Hi folks, welcome back to the show. I'm Andy Mark, and we're doing a quite extensive renovation of a 1920s semi-detached house in the UK. And I thought it would be fun to bring you on our journey through that renovation process. And we are finally up to that stage where all of the first fixed wiring's in, the central heating's in, everything that needs to go under the floors is under the floors, and we are gonna insulate under the floors to make the whole place as thermally efficient as it can possibly be. Now, these joists aren't particularly big joists, so I can only really go for 75 mil insulation. Ideally, you'd go at least 100 mil, but they're just, the joists aren't big enough to do that. But at the end of the day, 75 mil is better than nothing, which it currently has. Let me take you on a bit of a guided tour of what we're gonna be doing, and then we're gonna crack on with it straight away because this is a big job. So I'm gonna be working in a couple of rooms here. So we'll be kind of swapping and changing between the two because both are at slightly different stages. So we're in the living room at the moment. This room, I've lifted some of the floorboards, but I haven't lifted all of them. And I'm gonna give you a few tips for lifting the floorboards. And then over in the dining room, these floorboards are already lifted. I've got hopefully enough lifted that I can do all of the insulation without having to take any more up. We shall see if I have to take the odd extra board up, then so be it. But uh, I think we'll be all right like this. I've also got the hallway to do as well. The kitchen's already done. The hallway I'm going to be doing last. This is probably one of the trickiest ones because there's lots of like fiddly little cut-ins and all that sort of thing. And plus, if there's ever going to be an area where we're still going to need underfloor access because we've maybe forgotten something, it's going to be in this space here. Now, there are a couple of different schools of thought about how to go about doing this. I'm doing it the method that's been recommended by the architect and it's been approved by building regs and I think it'll be absolutely fine. And that is to do uh, basically PIR, rigid insulation boards, as I say, I'm doing 75 mil just because I'm limited on the joist size. When we do the extension out the back there, I'll be doing 100 mil. But as I say, this will be way, way better than nothing. Those boards are very easy to cut. I've got a big stockpile of the boards sitting outside there ready to go. I have heard some people mention concerns about PIR boards and whether or not air can kind of circulate around them and whether or not that's going to cause any long-term problems. I'm not aware of any long-term problems. And plus, I've put a lot of effort into really sorting out the underfloor ventilation in this space. So every floorboard that I'm taking up, I'm cleaning under the floors, I'm cleaning out all of the honeycomb brickwork so that the air can circulate well. I've made sure all the air bricks are clear, so there shouldn't be any problem with underfloor ventilation. But if that is a concern to you, you may want to look at a different method to the one that I'm going to be using. As I say, I'm not saying this is the way you should do it. You're just watching the way that I'm choosing to do it. So all I'm going to basically do, I've cut up many, many battens, and this is a fraction of what I'll need, by the way. These are just 20 mil square battens. I've cut them up on the table saw. If you don't have a table saw, you're probably going to have to buy these in. But uh, yeah, as I say, this is a, uh, it's not really a DIY task, a, a keen DIYer. If you've got a table saw and things, fair enough, okay. But these buttons are gonna get brad nailed to the sides of the joists, and then the rigid insulation will sit on those buttons. The advantage of doing it this way as well, if you try and do the buttons more or less a full length, then if you end up with any little gaps around the insulation boards, then drafts can't really get up because the, the battens are in the road. And plus with the air nailer, I can reach under the floorboards without having to take all of the boards up and then I can drop the insulation in and slide it along, hopefully. The only times that that's not gonna be possible is if the joists are varying in width by quite a long way. So for example, if it was like 
32 centimetres wide here and 36 centimetres wide up there under the floorboards and I put the insulation board in and then push it along then it's going to end up dropping through the gap. Don't know if you can hear the dogs but uh, yeah this is one of the rooms that we haven't soundproofed by the way. So this is the room I'm mainly going to be working on but let me quickly show you how to take up the floorboards or how I go about taking up the floorboards because it is a little bit of a pain in the neck. Another thing worth mentioning by the way, you can't be precious about your floorboards. Your floorboards are going to get trashed because trying to take your floorboards up without damaging them is very difficult. You're going to have to cut off all the tongues and grooves and then I'm going to be screwing them all back down. So if you're wanting to put a wooden floor in after underfloor insulation, uh, forget about using the existing floor. You would have to put a new floor over the top, which is by the way what we're going to be doing. But yeah, I would say don't be too precious about the floorboards because they are not easy to get up without damaging them. So I've marked up where I'm going to cut these boards. I'm going to take out this, 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 this and this. I've already done the long cuts to cut off the tongues and grooves but I'm going to cut this here just to make them a little bit easier to handle. I know the joists going along here because I can see all the nails going in and I've got a blade. It's very difficult to do the cut without hitting the nails. This is a multi-material blade that'll handle it. If you go through the nails with a normal blade, it will destroy your blade. This saw isn't great. The depth adjustment on it is absolutely shockingly bad and it tends to kind of adjust the depth by itself while using it, even though I've got it like as tight as it'll go without breaking the depth adjustment, but hey. So do try and use a saw that the depth adjustment actually works and you don't end up cut cutting through your joists. But let's get this done. The first board's always the trickiest one. As I say, if you want to see someone being precious with their floorboards, then please watch a different channel. I will be as careful as I can. Let's try and get this one up first. That's starting to split there, so I'm now going to come in from the other side. It might, it might split anyway, just, sometimes it's just unavoidable if they're old boards, and they're very dry, the wood, you know. If you do want to protect your other floorboards, you can put like a metal scraper or something under there, but Honestly, you'll be here forever in a day. Get rid of all your old tongues. And then I'm going to put all these in a pile to denail them. I'll do the denailing outside. Um, what I will actually do, this makes life a little bit easier is I'm going to mark where the boards came from. Uh, let's see, so we're doing that, 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 and that. So I'm just going to do A, B, C, D, E. I've got a join here, so there's another A. Uh, where else have we got joins? So obviously we've got a join here. Get an E there, just put a line so we can see where the join was. Uh, is that a join? No, that's not a join. That'll do. Whole board splitting at the bottom. That's it. Right. I'm just going to take some of these nails out, the crowbar.
and then the fun bit. I highly recommend you get yourself one of these. I think it's called a pallet buster and uh, I'll include a link in the description below and in the pinned comment to this because this is an absolute lifesaver for getting the boards up. Once you've got one up and all you do, pop it on the joist. Just work your way along. I've damaged this one a bit, but what I can do is put some, put some wood glue on that, clamp it back together, and you'll never know. If you can keep the original bit, you will be able to fix the boards if you do damage them. As I say, it's very hard to get them up without damaging them. So yeah, one of these makes life infinitely easier for getting the floorboards up. I'm not taking all the floorboards up because you're just giving yourself extra work, really. I'm taking up any loose ones like this one's held down with dodgy nails. I'm going to take that one up just because, look at that, it's not even properly held down. So I'll take that up, but other than that, that'll do. So, next thing, before you do anything, take your nails out your joists before you end up accidentally standing on one of them and uh, doing yourself a mischief. So I find Crowbar is the easiest for that. Oh, look at that. Brand new nails here that the, the joiner must have left. Wow. 100 year old they've been sitting there on top of that wall plate. Any more? All the way along here, look at this. newspapers look at that I've got a date Newcastle versus Manchester United <laughs> I'll show you that in a second these ones at the end these are going to be tricky to get out sometimes there's no option but to just tackle them with an angle grinder because uh, they can be quite tricky to get out Especially if the, if the heads have gone on the nails, they are nigh on impossible to shift. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's one more. Right in the edge of that one. Done. Right, next job. Oh, let me show you this first. <laughs> April the 21st, kickoff 3.15. What year is it? <laughs> A good thing is Gosforth Greyhound Stadium tonight, 7.15. Evening Chronicle. Can't find anything with a date or a year. Love this sort of stuff. Oh, might be in luck. 1951. Saturday, 21st of April, 1951. Anyway, right, next job is to clean out under the floors. By the way, look at this. Here's the old. Uh, cast iron vent pipe for the old fire. So I'm gonna clean up all under the floors, get this immaculate. Look at the spider webs, spider web tastic under here. So I'm gonna do all that and then I'm gonna denail those floors 
And then we're going to switch to the other room because the other room is kind of ready to go. This room's full of junk. And as if by magic, that is it all cleared up. And just to kind of give you a gauge of what we're shooting for here, you know, you're not going to be having your dinner off this, but you are going to be reducing the airflow under the floor when you put this um, insulation in, because obviously the air can't get over the top of the wall plates anymore. So it's really important that any honeycomb brickwork is nice and clear. So I've made sure all the way along that there's plenty cross ventilation under here and it's just a, a bit of a tidy up really you know this is the last time this under floor is going to see the light of day for hopefully another hundred years so about three buckets of uh, rubbish came out from under the floor and by the way I mean you can see the wall plates absolutely solid hundred year old wall plate on the sleeper wall there all absolutely great if there's any signs of insect damage or you know woodworm or rot or anything you need to get that all fixed and you need to make sure you've found the root cause of those problems before you start doing a job like this you want your floor to be immaculate because once you've got the insulation in as I say you are reducing the airflow a little bit so if there's a problem already then you don't want to be making the problem any worse. So if there was any signs of bug damage or anything like that, I would be treating the timbers. But my general school of thought is, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. And I'm not going to be treating timbers that have been fine for 100 years on the off chance that they might suddenly not be fine. As I say, subfloor ventilation is really good in here. And that is one of the key things to make sure that you maintain. So next job, get yourself a little off cut of insulation and we're going to be using this as a spacer for doing the subfloor insulation in the dining room. So we're switching rooms now and this is the room I'm going to tackle. I've got all of the battens ready to go. As I say, I'm using an air nail gun, little brad nailer. You can screw the battens if you want but uh, this is by far the quickest way that I've found of doing it it's quite inexpensive as well I'm just using my little swan compressor which uh, I did have some problems with it when I first bought it but Axminster fixed it and I've touched wood never had any problems since and the nice thing about this compressor is that it's really quiet make sure you've got safety glasses obviously also make sure you've got a stock I'll keep my uh, kind of spare nails and whatnot, but make sure you've got a, a stock of brad nails because you're going to get through hundreds of them on a job like this. I'm going to try and use the longer battens in the harder to reach places because if there's anywhere that you're going to have problems sliding the insulation under the floor, it's going to be in the harder to reach places. So I'm going to try and get the longer battens under kind of these sections and then I'll keep the shorter battens for like the easy to reach bits.
always amazed at how many buttons you get through doing this, no matter how many buttons you think you need, you need more. Uh, this room is all done and I've also done kind of probably half of the living room. I've done as much as I can kind of get access to at the minute. So I've done everything down there right across to the far end of that wall. I can't do anything else in here until I've done the dining room and then I'll move everything out of here in the dining room. So the next job is to get the underfloor insulation in. Before I do that, I'll just give you a couple of little tips on doing the battens. First of all, we've got this copper gas pipe running all the way down here. You'll see I've left a little gap just kind of for maintenance. You know, you're thinking future access to that pipe. And the other thing is don't nail if you're anywhere near pipes or cables because you never know. You might get a blowout on the nail and the nail could easily go through the pipe or cable if it decides to come out at a funny angle. So for example here, there's no way I would risk putting a nail right in the end of that because if it decides to blow out and go downwards, it would go straight into that gas pipe. So keep your nails well away from pipes. I've also tried to make sure that the timber isn't touching the wall anywhere. Just, I mean, we're above DPC level, but you want to make sure you're not like bridging damp proof courses or anything like that anywhere. And when it comes to doing the insulation in here, because we've got at the end here, we've got obviously an air brick in the corner here and we've got an air brick in the corner here. So if I was to butt the insulation all the way up to that wall, it would block the air vent. So we can't do that. So I'm going to cut the insulation at an angle and leave it a little bit shy, probably about 200 mil shy of this opening. And I'm going to cut it at an angle so that air is kind of forced underneath the insulation, if that makes sense. So what I'm going to do next is measure the distance between every joist and I'm going to just write it on the buttons and then I don't have to keep going back and forward to the tape measure. So I'm going to write all the measurements at one end and at the other end and double check because there's no way that these joists will be exactly the same distance apart. And then it's just a question of cutting the insulation to fit and pushing it down all the gaps. The insulation is very easy to cut, but it does make an unholy mess. I found doing it outside on the grass works pretty well because then the grass stops all the little foam bits from blowing around everywhere. Anyway, up to you how you want to do that. Let's crack on, get this last bit done.
And after the magic floorboard fairies have put all your floorboards back down for you, that is us completely done, all insulated underneath. Now, one thing I am going to tell you is that a lot of these floorboards are in a really bad state. If this was going to be a carpet or something like that going down, I would replace those boards. But because eventually we're putting a new hardwood floor on top of this floor, since we're doing that, I'm not particularly bothered about what state these floorboards are in. As long as they're nice and solid and there's no squeaks, then I'm perfectly happy. One thing that you could do as well, obviously you could seal the gaps with like expanding foam or something like that, but if you want to avoid any drafts potentially coming up. Because of the way I've done it with the battens, there shouldn't really be any drafts coming up, but you never know. But again, because there's going to be a hardwood floor over the top of this, I'm not particularly bothered about doing that. But if you were putting carpet down, I would suggest you're a bit more um, caring about your floorboards. But as I say, as long as they're nice and solid, no squeaks and uh, yeah we're done one floor completely insulated so my next job now i'm going to move the contents of the living room into this room so that i can get the living room all cleared out because as you can see there's no way that i can insulate under a floor in here so that's my next job Time wise, I would say you're looking at about um, half a day to a day to do all of the battening and cleaning out under the floors and all that sort of thing. And then pff, a good half day for doing the insulation and a couple of hours for putting your floorboards back. If you've got any questions or comments, pop them down below. Don't forget there's extra stuff over on the member zone as well, members.gosforthandyband.com if you want behind the scenes stuff and I'm going to be doing a complete budget breakdown of how much we've spent on this renovation, uh, uh, some behind the scenes planning related stuff as well. So if you want any of that, get on to members.gossethandyman.com. For now, thanks again for watching. I shall see you next time. Totally bye. <laughs>